On a limited budget in a small room, is there a priority with what to address? Starting with base traps and add panels as funds follow or the other way around. There's this kind of uh, misconception that uh, an acoustic panel is not the same thing as a base trap. People typically think that base traps are only for corners. That's where the base traps go. And then you put acoustic panels everywhere else. Um, you can actually, uh, you know, the only only difference is between a, an acoustic panel and a bass trap is um, the the uh, the frequency range at which it's absorptive. So if you have thick acoustic panels, if they're thick enough and they absorb from the high, you know, 20 kilohertz in the high range down to 80 hertz, that's a bass trap. Most speakers are pretty good down to about 40 hertz. If you can get good absorption as close to that as possible with your, and you make every acoustic panel thick enough to be able to absorb that range, then you've got way more chance of being able to get that very, very difficult bass range under control. So ideally you would have, you know, the thickest panels along the, the, the walls, the ceiling, and then you'd have even thicker panels in the corners Corner traps are very space efficient because people don't tend to hang out in corners. So it's a good place to put very thick panels, but you still want to have all, you know, the thick, the thickest panels that you can everywhere else as well, because every little bit helps. So um, to start off with, you know, I would say use some thick panels at your first reflection points, if nothing else, along the side walls, roughly halfway between your speakers and your ears. If you can get two on each side, then that's that's great. Even more coverage and same on your ceiling. You want to have a couple at first re reflection points there. And then after you've done that, if you still desire further accuracy, that's when I would start putting some panels again, thick panels on the rear wall behind you. Once you fix something, it reveals some other problem. So when you're sitting in an untreated room, you know, the big problems are gigantic the first reflections it's the boomy base so now you take care of your first reflections and it's like wow that's a lot better but within a day or so you're gonna be like wow what is that oh that's the rear wall oh okay let me fix that so you fix the rear wall and then it's like well this is better but you know the base is kind of okay you get your corner traps in there so now you're like wow this is so much better but now you're gonna start hearing anything that's untreated so yeah you know we tend to think about like where's the speaker pointing you know, we've taken care of the big thing. So now where's the speaker pointing? Where is it interacting with first? People always want to treat the front wall just because it's what they look at and they see everybody treat the front wall so much. But, you know, unless you're using a dipole, you know, or like a planar speaker or something bi-directional, the front wall pretty much only interacts in, in the low end. Once you've treated the room a lot, you will hear treatment on the front wall, but that's generally much further kind of down the hierarchy of what you're going to do so you know after those yes the, the rear side walls you know that's probably the next thing after that maybe the ceiling over your head then you start going to the front wall you know and then it's just it's it's kind of sprinkles from there but be ready you know for things that show up and you're like wow i, I never heard that problem before it's like well yeah because it was masked by all the other problems you know now now you've revealed those yeah it becomes more obvious the more you treat you know that's where you should start and and to that point, you know, it's amazing what difference you can achieve just by moving your speakers, moving your listening position. That's 80% of the work is 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 finding the right speaker location and the right listening position. Once you've got that dialed in, you can, it's you, you know, that's that doesn't cost anything. It's free. And honestly, we see that there's one particular problem. I think I bring it up every time we have one of these chats, but it's just SBIR you know, big null somewhere in the base, in the high base, low mid range, and it's entirely due to speaker placement and room size. And that's the thing that everybody, you know, I mean, 90% of the things we have, yeah, everything's great, but there's this big hole at like 75, 80 Hertz. And it's like, so just getting the speakers right will often, it may not fix it, but it will, it will reduce the the effect of it there are some rooms that the dimensions are just not cooperative and there's just no way it's just no way yeah. you know but if you can minimize that null then you end up with something you can actually work with that type of problem you know these nulls these sbir nulls they're not necessarily treatable unless you're going with a full build-out design where the walls are going to be two feet three feet thick with 
hyper efficient absorption behind it, you're really not going to completely take away that thing, you know, and, and even when you have all that treatment, you still got to get the speaker, the speaker placement, right. I've seen that in rooms that I never expected it to be a problem. Um, it's still, it's still the biggest thing to solve. 